Hello, everybody. Welcome to What's Wrong with the World Hour. My name is Jason Hicks, Nine. and you're in What's Wrong with the World Hour. Uh, it's going to be a great night tonight. Uh, we are What's Wrong with the World Hour. Excuse me, I'm tearing everything up over here. Okay, I'm just getting wound up. Um, so, What's Wrong with the World Hour is brought to you by Spiritual. Uh, <laughs> we still believe Ministries. Excuse the misspeaking. Which is all about spiritual deliverance. That's what we do. We believe in spiritual deliverance. We believe in the things of God. We believe in the fivefold ministry, five fundamentals of the faith. We believe that if it's in your Bible, it's you can pretty well count on it. You can bank on it, right? Is that about right? What's up? Oh, excuse me. That's my honey right there. Sorry. That was Teacher Paige. Uh, so anyway, we... Uh, we had a great service today. If you if you didn't catch it, go catch it on Facebook, YouTube. Can you bump that thing down one degree? I'm roasting. Thank you. Um, Facebook, YouTube. We're trying to get on Rumble, but if anybody, any of you guys have tried to upload a video to Rumble, you will know that it is not a it's not something that's conducive to someone that doesn't have just hours to spend trying to load something up. Um, so Rumble, we're working on, you know, there's all kind of different things, bit shoot, there's, uh, telegram. I don't know. Uh, you name it. I, anyway, Facebook seems to be the one that is the most widely used. So that's what we just go with. And that's kind of where the Lord directed us. Cause I don't okay, I don't have Facebook. I don't know. So anyway, what are we going to talk about tonight? What's wrong with the world hour? Uh, what's wrong with the world hour? We are, um, like I said, part of, we still believe ministries. And join us at uh, we still believe ministries.org. Check us out on Facebook under that same name. Check us out on YouTube. We, you know, and if you're watching now, you're watching tonight, you're watching any other time, share it. Get on there and share it. Give us some comments. Uh, Paige and I will be monitoring the comments. Hey, Joe, great to have you. Every, look here. Everybody needs a Joe. You know what? All of our people are awesome. And uh, I, I, look here. Y'all, we had the best ministry there is. I love it. I, I mean... Everybody's just awesome. Every, there's such uh, unity. There's such unity in the body. And it's great. It's um, it's just awesome. I, I love being part of We Still Believe Ministries. I absolutely do. So what are we talking about tonight? We talked about it once. Y'all better start paying attention. Y'all better start paying attention. That the, the title for tonight is Good Lord, I Hope You're Paying Attention Now. And don't be like this guy, okay? Don't be like this guy. This is the the church has enough of these guys that we don't need another one, right? Somebody say, I don't want to be him. I sure don't want to be him. But, um, oh, she she was talking to the cat. She wasn't talking to me. Uh, Anyway, y'all, you gotta, you better be paying attention. Pay attention to what's going on right now in the world. Pay attention to. What is it? It's Mark 818. Having eyes to hear, they did not hear. You see, it's it's um, having eyes to see, they could not see. That's where we're at. That is where we're at in, in this time that we live in. That, that people, people, for lack of a better phrase, they just, they don't, they just don't know. They, uh, you know, we, we as people, we get around and we think that we know so much. We think that we're so on top of things that, um, that we can't, uh, we can't see what's right in front of our face because we're so, we think we're so enlightened. Thank you so much. We think that we're so enlightened that um, we, we, we say you couldn't see something that fell right on your face. You know, and it's, it's just sad because as Christians, we think we know everything. As, as, as members of society, so often people think they know everything because well, I watch Fox News. I watch CNN. I watch this one. I, it, they lie to you. And, and, but for some reason, we think that, that they love us enough to tell us the truth. It's just like, good Lord, y'all. But it, it's what Jesus talked about in um, Mark chapter 18. There we go. Ah, ah, look at there, Mark 18. Mark 8, 18. Man, look at there. I think I know so much. I'm adding to the Bible, y'all. <laughs> look out. But Mark 8, 18, I want to make sure I read this right. Let's see here. Um, Is this it? Paige gave it to me. Let's see. Having eyes to see, you do not see. Having ears uh, to hear, you do not hear. This is what Jesus is asking a question. 
Jesus is asking a question. He says, having eyes to see, you do not see, and having ears to hear, do you not hear? Mm. And do you not remember? And something? Because it, we're so easy, we're so quick to forget. There he's talking about the loaves and all, and how the disciples forgot the, the amazing things that they saw. But it, it's that's that's kind of where we're at in the world today. Remember, we don't want to be like this guy. You don't want to be like him, okay? It's, um, I mean, we could almost have, a, you know, we could have a good time with this. Um, but anyway, you're on there. Get on, get on here and share it, share it with uh, friends, family, enemies, whatever. We want you to share. We want to get it out there. And what we want to do is we want to bring light to these things. This, this is not a phenomenon that's, uh, how about that, huh? This is not, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. This is, this is not a phenomenon that's like all of a sudden it's brand new. You see that Jesus had this with the disciples because in, in Mark 8, 8, 10, I'm going to open it back up. We're going to take a, we'll dive a little bit further into it and just think about it. I mean, that's all you have to do is just open your eyes and go, hey, am I falling into this too? This is, um, they had no bread. This is another time that they couldn't feed people. And Jesus said, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you, do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes to see and having ears to hear, do you not remember when I broke the five loaves and five thousand? How many baskets full of broken up pieces did you take up? And he said, they said to him, twelve. And uh, the seven and four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? So think about it. They couldn't even see. The disciples could not even see the amazing things that Jesus was doing, okay? They, they could not, they couldn't fathom the thing that Jesus was doing, the thing that he was, um, you know, look at, well, look at what God's doing out here. And what do they do? This way, this way. Sorry, it's backwards. Let's put it right here. Oh, this way. This guy, this guy here. Well, they do that like him. They're, What'd you say, Lord? You know what I mean? Hey, well, Fox News said, I saw it on Facebook. Maybe they said that, you know, and so, you know, so-and-so on Facebook, so there's no way we could do it, and that's where they get it from, and so what happens is the devil leads us straight into perdition. The devil the devil just marches us straight down, straight to hell, because why? We, we want to, we think we're, we think we know everything, and that's a very dangerous place to be. So anyway, I got these, uh, I got these articles I pulled off tonight. I got about four or five of them. We'll call it the stack here. Uh, try to get through them. We'll see how we can do. Y'all know I get a little long-winded. But uh, tonight, today, what we talked about at service was, uh, but y'all don't understand, he's famous. We're talking about Christian celebrities. We're talking about how a Christian, you need to you need to go check it out. Share that. Um, we talked about how, why are Christians following somebody other than Jesus? Kind of makes you wonder. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You know what they say? I'm just saying what I'm saying. That's all. If you like it, great. If you don't, hey, maybe I'm in the wrong. I don't know. But it's, um, Jesus was given the name above all names, right? He was given the name by which all men shall be saved. So your name should not matter. Uh, what you want should not matter. Not, nothing should matter except the name of Jesus. That's all it should ever matter. So check us out. We still believe ministries.org. And we'd love to have you. You know, get on there and tell us, tell us how much you love us. Tell us how much you hate us. We'd love you anyway, right? <laughs> but um, let's see. I'm trying to put up one of these awesome logos that uh, Young Miss Jordan did. Can't really see it because it's white. Oh well, we'll forgive it. We'll forgive it. Uh, so anyway, you know, we want you to check us out. Check us out YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. We still believe ministries. So here's a here's an article right here. I'm gonna hold it up so you guys can see it. I'm going to move it around a little bit too, make it even more confusing. So what this article is, is this article I put off of Breitbart News. That's just one of the websites I like to look at. It says, quote, this is reduce the population to save the planet. Here we go. It's climate change. We don't look here. You don't want to be like this guy, okay? You don't want to be like him. He don't have no sense, all right? He don't have any sense. So Britain and other Western nations should welcome declining populations and aging demographics as it will help them meet climate change goals. Well, somebody shout hallelujah, man. That's just great. The former chairman of, chairman of the Financial Services Authority has argued. This is Financial Services Authority in England, okay? In a report from Population Matters entitled Smaller Families and Aging Populations. Oh, oh, I get to do accents. Oh, yes. 
Lord Adair Terra, the chairman of UK Energy Transitions Commission, the former head of FSA, argued that declining native populations will enhance prosperity. So he says declining native populations will enhance prosperity. And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, what? So what he's saying is, is uh, so you see these migrant waves that are going all over the place around the world and they're getting in and they're like tearing up countries and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with people. I mean, everybody needs a chance. But if you come here, you come to the United States, you should assimilate, right, to the United States. If you go to England, Great Britain, you should assimilate to their society. But they're forcing the people, the hosts, to assimilate. They're actually saying that you should go and not have as many children. You should have your birth rates in decline so that they could come through and give you higher birth rates. So Turner himself, a father of five, isn't that something? He's a father of five. Also suggested that fertility rights... So you think the mask is something bad. You think the vaccine something. They're talking about fertility rights. Now you look at this vaccine stuff that's going around. Some are saying that there is a... Uh, there is uh, people are being infertility issues and things like that. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I don't pretend to be a doctor. I don't pretend to know why. But I'm just saying some people are saying that there's uh, illustrations. Let's get my boy off of there. Some people are saying there's times where like a person is young people are, have become infertile because of these jabs, right? Uh, so Turner himself, as a father of five, also suggested that fertility rights could be sold in order to incentivize poor people not to have children. Dang. By profiting from the sale of their child credit to wealthier people. So only the wealthy should have children. This is, this is what this thing's saying. Y'all, this is an article. The article was pulled from uh, a report from Population Matters entitled Smaller Families and Ag Aging Populations. That, this is an actual publication. You start looking into this stuff going wrong with the jabs and everything, and you will see that that's one of the things they're really working towards is population control. And so then you read this guy. He's the former head of the uh, FSA, the Financial Services Authority in England. This is a high-ranking dude. And he's saying that fertility rights, right, your fertility credit should be sold. Poor people should sell them to wealthy so I watch, you ever see that movie Titanic? Anybody remember that movie? Titanic is back in the 90s, what, like 96, 97? And um, they were doing the, uh, the girl, the main character, Rose or whatever her name was. She was, uh, she was talking to somebody about the lifeboats. And she knew there was, only, there was only enough lifeboats but about half the people there. And so her mother's trying to get on the lifeboat and she's like, uh, come on, let's get on the boat. I hope that the other, they don't let the people from steerage on. The low class, the poor, right? Look, here it is, okay? Just like in the article. That's what he said. And she says, Mother, do you not understand that there's not enough lifeboats by half? And her fiancé says, not the better half. So that, that's kind of where we're at. You see, the better half they can do, they can have kids. You can't because you're poor. You're a Neanderthal. This, this is how they look at you. Okay, that's how they look at you. Okay, you need to wake up, wake up and smell the roses. So he says, other prominent leftist figures in the West, including New York Congresswoman <laughs> and a couple other, have suggested that they may have fewer children than they would have otherwise if not for climate change. I think that was actually Alexandria Ocasio Cortez said that, that they're not going to have more kids because of climate change. I'm going, I don't want to, you know, I know a fellow that had a vasectomy at 27 years old. He said, I want to bring kids into this world. I'm looking at the current state of affairs. I'm going, you know what? Probably not a bad idea. I mean, good Lord, the way things are going. Church, you need to wake up. You need to wake up. Because people, people see this. I got news for y'all. You, you're not going to destroy the earth, okay? Y'all understand in the 50s, in the early 60s, that we had to have a UN treaty, Okay to tell the United States and Russia to quit building and testing all these bombs because they thought they were going to destroy the world. You know, we were sending nuclear warheads up and detonating them in called Operation Fishbowl, okay, trying to crack the firmament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Freedom of Information Act. You can find it. 
and it, it's you can't we're not going to destroy it so quit trying to well what it is is to tell you that you can't have more kids it's more just more control just like just like the rona it's more control they want to control you they want to control everything they want to tell you to wear a mask they want to tell you to get a jab they want to tell you what to do now they want to talk about telling you how many kids you can have how many miles you can drive blah, 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 blah. y'all look at this debt ceiling thing they're trying to pass that's part of it they want to tax you for every mile you drive they want to put taxes on your tires on all this stuff. That it's designed to take away your freedom. And once they take it, they ain't giving it back. I'm gonna tell you, they ain't giving it back. Um, so let's see here. So this this is okay. It's okay for them. It's okay for me, but not for thee. That's what that is. Okay, because he got five kids. And he's telling you you can't have no more. If we want real prosperity to take place, we can't. Natives can't have more. That was the thing in the article. He said natives should not have more children. They should have to pay for more child credits and things like this. I'm going, hmm, because they're trying to, you know, it's uh, Klaus Schwab in a book that he wrote about the Great Reset, which is what we're experiencing now. He think this is what he thinks of you. Mm-hmm, that's it right there. Because he, he talked about that we need to reduce the world's population by 20%. By 20%, y'all. That's me. That's you. That, that's what they think. And so you see this stuff happening. It just starts to build. It just starts to build. Y'all better start paying attention. Better start paying attention. Uh, then you have this one, uh, this thing on, on uh, Twitter. It's, it's called Enlightened. Mary and Harry, Megan and Harry, not Mary and Harry, Megan and Harry, the royal couple. Um, they get an award for only having two children. I'm going to have two kids because... We just care that much for the environment. We have a third. <laughs> they can destroy the world. Shut up. You know, it says we commend the Duke and Duchess for taking this enlightened decision for affirming that a, a smaller family is also a happy family. It said population matters. Yeah, population matters. That's the, yeah. Right, that, that's it. They, they don't want you having no more kids. I'm just telling you. Because if, if freedom-loving people, okay, if God-fearing people are having more kids, then that ain't going to happen as much. Don't be walking around looking like this idiot, right? You're not. Because why? We're going to educate our kids. Because we're starting to see, we're starting to, people are starting to wake up. That's the great thing. Is uh, I said it this morning, we are talking about this COVID stuff, and we are talking about, preachers preaching about uh, politicians and all this stuff. Sometimes God says you got to take your medicine. Okay? Sometimes you got to take your medicine. And that's what we're dealing with right now. It's time to take your medicine. But it's awakening that spirit within us. People that, that have never been saved are getting saved. Okay? And I guess that's people's never been. Anyway. Um it's it's a great thing to see because we're we're at a time in the world in the history of the world where um, amazing things are happening for the cause of Christ. Let's see here, what do we got here? That's not, I'm trying to work this. Uh, there we go. I missed my my editor here. I missed my program director, Miss Page. Um, but we're at a time in history where so many amazing things we're getting we're getting to see the book of daniel and the book of revelation just come to life right before our eyes and it's absolutely incredible um so let's see here the report acknowledged that a declining and aging population will result in workforce shortages but pointed out the use of automation and migration as possible solutions to the problem as well as decreasing retirement ages dang ain't that something so they're going to bring in people we're going to hey you're not going to be able to have more kids, but we're going to bring in people to replace you so that you can be totally dependent on the government. The only thing we're supposed to be a slave to is Jesus. That's it. You ain't supposed to be a slave to nothing else. All right? And that's what they're trying to get us to where we depend on the government for everything. Remember the movie Wally? The little dude that came around Wally like that? And it was an animation. It was a cartoon. We watched it with the kids when they were little. But it was the, the people were just fat, happy blobs. They sat on these deck chairs all the time, and they zzz, they got around on the little remote control in the chair. They couldn't even stand up. Their bones were like mush because they got so dependent on somebody else to make them happy. They didn't do anything for themselves. They couldn't rebel. They couldn't do anything. It's kind of where we're getting to now. Um, let's see here. 
with more than 70, 750 million people willing to move from other countries. This is a quote. To others, migration of workers across borders can help address shortage of labor in some circumstances as well as boosting tax revenue and pension funds. No, it isn't because these are it's, it's, they're, they're being brought in as cheap labor. That's, that's, you see the invasion we're happen, having on our border. And it's not that it, the more people you come in, more people you bring in, and they pay them less and less, it drives my wages down. It drives your wages down. It's just common sense. So it's not gonna it's not gonna bring up the tax revenue because they're not legal. Therefore they're not paying taxes. Duh. But this is part of the lie. This is one of the things that they teach. It's just pay attention. Y'all better start paying attention. Look, it's right there. Y'all better start paying attention. Um the report did add a caveat that migration could lead to some negative effects, you think, on both the source and destination countries including migrants driving down wages by increasing the labor pool and in many cases willing to work for fewer salary or lower salaries. Imagine that. They're here. They want to work. You know, I'll take anything. You ever been desperate? No matter what it pays, I'll take it. Um, while the report did highlight some of the negative ramifications of migration, it failed to note that the vast majority of population growth in Britain in recent years has come as a result of mass migration policies. So that that's... Uh, that's some of what England's experiencing. It, it, the Western nations all over the world are experiencing this because it's, uh, you know, it's, y'all, they're trying to get rid of you. I'm just going to tell you, they're trying to get rid of you. And, you know, eventually you got you to gotta, you gotta wake up. Eventually we're going to have to start paying attention. I mean, it's it, unless you like uh, unless you like being a pawn of the government. If you like being a pawn of the government, well, hey, just keep on being our friend here, okay? All right, so let's see here what we got next. What we got next? I'm trying to get through this stuff, y'all. This is more Rona Jab news, okay? Rona Jab news. That's what we'll call it. Look at there. Let's go this way. There we go. How about that? All right, this is report Southwest Airlines cancels thousands of flights due to air traffic control walkouts over jab mandates. Ain't that something? The jab man, this is a story from Jamie White. She's an independent news lady. So we, I'm, I, I mean, this is beautiful. Dallas-based airline claims cancellations due to air traffic control issues and disruptive weather. Of course, they're going to blame it on that. Is there a blackout of furious airlines workers refusing the Rona jab, starting seeing that way because their their pilots, they say they're nine hundred or a thousand pilots ish, are um, looking at striking. So the pilots are getting ready to strike, and so are air air traffic controllers. Why are that? Hmm. I read a study one day. It was talking about uh, people, the most vaccin jab hesitant people are PhDs. I would have thought that it was the less educated. But it's the, the ones that hold PhDs, higher educated. That's the most resistant to this. You know, we're going to get into hospitals and nurses and doctors here shortly. Well, what did Jesus say? Mark 18, uh, 17, is that right? 18, 18. Having eyes to see, having eyes you do not see, having ears you do not hear. And do you not remember? Remain, you better remember what they did to you. Let I me mean, think about it. Nazi Germany. I have a meme somebody gave me. It says, don't forget to show them your papers when you go out. It shows some German soldiers checking a Jewish lady's papers. Yeah, how soon do we forget? How soon do we forget what's been, what's been done to somebody? Southwest Airlines, and we say, what? Well, it's not affecting me. It will. It will. Southwest Airlines canceled thousands of flights over the weekend, citing air traffic control issues and disruptive weather. The ATC... Issues and uh, disruptive weather have resulted in a high volume of cancellations throughout the weekend while we work to recover our operation, the airline said in a tweet on Saturday. So what happened? Was it like, Gil was it tornadoes? No. Hurricanes? No. Snowstorms, hail, sleet, freezing rain, sub-zero temperatures? No. I don't know. What a lot of adverse weather conditions they're not used to. Uh, the ATC issues and disruptive weather have resulted in high volume of cancellations throughout the weekend. While we work to recover our operation, we appreciate your patience as 
We accommodate affected customers and customer service wait times are longer than usual. Yeah, good. Good. Quit trying to force people to do things they don't want to do. It's ridiculous. I work at a place like that. Uh, we are working hard behind the scenes to minimize challenges and fully recover the operation as we take care of displaced crews and customers as quickly as possible, the company said. I'm glad people people have the guts to walk out. You know what? That's the only way it changes because what's next? What's next? How long are you going to take? How long are you going to let them push you around? That's what you got to ask yourself. How long are you going to let them push you around? Do you like having your nose snubbed in the crap like you would a dog? Because that's what they're doing. Wake up, people. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. Don't be him. Wake up. Okay? Uh, let's see. Alan Casher, who oversees daily flight operations, told staff in a note on Saturday, we experienced significant impact in the Florida airports Friday evening after an FAA-imposed air traffic management program was implemented due to weather and resulted in a large number of cancellations. Yeah, right. Uh, you know what's crazy? So somebody comes to church. They just spent the week in Florida. They said they didn't see one it rain one day. We didn't rain every day here. Uh, some passengers in Tampa didn't buy a Southwest explanation of bad weather. Probably because they go outside and look and go, it's Tampa, we don't have bad weather. Tampa's beautiful. We used to go to Tampa every year for soccer. Loved it. I mean, loved it. Um, quote, that sounds like baloney to me, B.J. Romero told Fox 13. The weather is fine in all connecting areas. There's no bad weather. There's got to be something behind the scenes they're not telling us. Imagine that. They're lying. Imagine that. You're being lied to again. It's uh, Somebody sent me a meme the other day. Man, I wish I would have put it on here. It would have been perfect. He said, um, some of y'all are going to believe the government all the way up to the time that your pronouns become was and were. <laughs> Ain't that the truth right there? Um, he says, that sounds like uh, baloney to me. Reports on social media were claiming the mass flight cancellations were due to air traffic controllers walking out in mass to protest the jab mandate. Rumors confirmed oh, was by local news affiliates. So that the rumors were confirmed. Some somebody actually went out and asked them, "Is that why y'all are leaving?" Don't be this guy. Don't be this guy. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, quote: The truth is that pilots are on strike due to jab mandates placed by Southwest requiring pilots to be vaccinated or risk being fired. Oh, yeah. So when we talk about population control, that's why we let off with this first story with the uh, this guy here that we talked about first because they're talking about population control. All right? You're talking about controlling the people. We're getting rid of Now we're letting pilots go? That's not like a, like, well, I used to be a delivery man for a soda company. You can get anybody to come do that. I mean, really, it's a tough job. That's hard work. I'm not, I'm not like beating that down or nothing, but you can get anybody to do it. It's not like flying a plane. Any idiot can't just hop in a plane and fly. It ain't happening. You know what I mean? And they're walking, uh, they're walking in mass. So because Southwest refused to hear the pilots' concerns, thousands of passengers found out last minute that their flights would be canceled and were given a rescheduled flight in two days. Because they claimed ACT, ATC issues, they refused to refund anything or comp hotel rooms for passengers. So they're blaming on air traffic control. So that way they don't have to uh, give people their money back. This is getting good, y'all. You know what? People are waking up. Y'all better start paying attention. If you don't, you're going to look like that guy. Just saying. Uh, another user claimed an insider revealed that air traffic controllers at the Jackson International Airport walked out over the mandate, but a local new, uh, but a total news blackout is preventing the story from surfacing. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. It, the, the news, you have to quit, quit watching the news. Quit watching the news. You're, whatever comes on TV, they're lying to you. It's, it's a bunch of crap. It's garbage. It's trash. I wouldn't look at any of it. I mean, that's it, all it is. It's just crap. You need to find some alternative news, okay? You need to find people online because, uh, you know, that's telling you what's happening. Because this stuff doesn't come out. This stuff, you're not going to find this stuff on ABC, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, Fox, any of that. You might find on Tucker Carlson. That's going to be about it. Um, Jacksonville Center Air Traffic Controllers. Walked out last night over the vaccine mandate, the insider said. Shut the whole thing down. Total disaster for us and other airlines. 
Total News Blackout. Be sure to spread the word. Is there a media blackout on last night's air traffic control walkout in Jacksonville, Florida? Hundreds of flights were canceled. Walkout due to jab mandates. But I bet you didn't hear it. I don't know if you heard anything about it on the news tonight because I, didn't, I don't watch the news. That's a bunch of crap in there. It's a bunch of crap, you know. I mean, like in our local area here, you got you got a, the main one of the main employers is getting ready to lay off anywhere from a thousand to two thousand people because they didn't get the thing right. And has the news done an expose on it? No, mm -mm. nothing, absolutely nothing. Why? What's the big deal? Because it's part of the system. Start paying attention. You're gonna be like that guy. Just saying that guy right there. Not this guy. That guy. All right, so it's not just air traffic controllers who are reportedly furious over the mandate. Southwest Airlines Pilots Association, which represents about 9,000 pilots. Hope y'all wasn't planning on going nowhere. 9,000 pilots asked the court on Friday to temporarily block the airline from implementing its mandate an existing lawsuit over oppressive uh, Rona policies until it's resolved. The new mandate unlawfully imposes new conditions of employment and the new policy threatens termination of any pilot not fully by December 8, 2021, the legal filing said. Southwest Airlines, additional new and unilateral modification of the party's collective bargaining agreement is uh, in clear violation of the uh, L RLA, which is Railroad Labor Act. Southwest Airlines announced last week that all 60,000 employees must take the before receiving an exemption by November 24th. American Airlines also saw hundreds of its own employees protesting the mandate uh, outside of its corporate headquarters in Fort Worth, Texas last Thursday. Further evidence that the vaccine mandate is, uh, see, I'm trying not to say that, uh, extremely unpopular within the airline industry. Why? These are smart people. These are smart, skilled people. Why do they not want it? Mm. Interesting. Right? Uh, the walkouts have, could become systemic throughout the industry as reports surface that other anti-mandate airline employees are taking notice of what's happening within Southwest. Thank you, people at Southwest. I thank God for you. Because what's happening is, guess what? You are emboldening other people. You know what I mean? It just, that's what I say. It just takes one. It just takes one person. Just one. Just one. Don't, don't you want to be the one? It takes one person to push back. To tell the devil, get back from me. We're gonna we're gonna do what we're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna we're gonna stand up for our neighbors, for our children. Because look, if you don't stand up, it's gonna be bad for you, but your kids and their kids, it's gonna be horrible. It's gonna be horrible. I mean, I talk, we talked to one that's a uh, per person in our church. Is the person said, I don't even remember what it was like before masks. And they're young, you know what I mean? They don't. It's it's sad. It's freaking sad. Um, I'm, hear, I'm hearing, this is a election wizard here on Twitter. He says, I'm hearing other airline crews may soon be experiencing the mile high flu that is currently causing major problems at Southwest Airlines. Praise God. Look here. That right there, you want to get the nation's attention? You want to turn this thing? You shut down air, air traffic, air travel? You could shut this nation down financially. That's a huge chunk of change right there. So, you know what? Don't be like him, okay? Um, what else we got here? And it's fun. There's all kind of stuff, man. And this is just stuff I found today in like five minutes. It's amazing. It's scary. It's scary to me. So, anyway, uh, mandates <clears throat> hit uh, amid historic healthcare staff shortage. This is from Bloomberg News. This is what morons that trust mainstream news would call. Uh, this is what this guy, I shouldn't say morons. This is what this guy would call trusted source because it's Bloomberg. Been around lying to me for years. I know I can trust them. It says nearly one in four bed lies, beds lie empty in Terra Vista Behavioral Health Center in Massachusetts. Not for lack of patients, but for lack of staff. I don't talk about this with a health care provider, don't talk, which behavioral health is health care, but it's just different. Okay. Um, but let's see here. It says one in four beds because of lack of staff. 
Not because it's empty and they don't have any patients. They got no staff. Um, even before the pandemic, nurses and lower paid aides were in perennial short supply. But the 116-bed facility could still run full, said the chief executive officer, uh, Michael Krupa. At similar hospitals around Massachusetts, hundreds of beds can't be filled, and the reason is exclusively staff, he said. Hmm. What some are calling the worst U.S. health care labor crisis in memory is sharpening concerns about attrition from resistance to mandates. Even in the medical mecca of uh, Taxachusetts, where COVID remains, uh, cases remain well within hospital capacity, about 16% of American hospitals had critical staffing shortages as of October 1st, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The uptick initially coincided with a surge in Rona-19 hospitalizations, but shortages have persisted even as the virus ebbs, suggesting other factors. So that's the thing. Remember, we heard all these shortages. We still got shortages. And it's not that the hospitals are being overwhelmed. There ain't nobody there to work. Nobody there to work. Quote, we don't have a single position we can't afford to lose right now, said Eric Dixon, president of UMass Memorial Health. He told Bloomberg Radio last month, I have areas that have 50% vacancy rate, and God forbid we lose any more. So here's the thing. We're in the middle of the biggest pandemic the world's ever seen, right? You watch the news. If you watch the news, that's what they're telling you then why are we firing hospital staff? Think of that. This guy here says, because it's the, it's the worst thing since the bubonic plague, man. Because <laughs> he's an idiot. But if it's the biggest healthcare crisis the world has ever seen, why around the world are industrialized, westernized nations laying off and firing hospital workers? People that have been in the trenches. Remember last year, they were all heroes. They were all heroes. We could learn so much from them because they really put themselves out. They did it last year without the... They did it without that. And now this year, we're firing them for not getting it, but majority of them never even got sick. Ain't that something? They said, I don't need this. I don't. Know. What's it going to do for me? I didn't get sick. I don't need it. And I worked in it all year. I ought to tell you something. Don't tell you it's a bunch of crap when your health care workers and your doctors don't want to take it. People. Start paying attention. Start paying attention. Here's from Kit Daniels. Vatican. No religious exemptions from the mandate. <laughs> the head of the, the, the home of the Catholic Church. No, we can't give religious exemptions. The Vatican is slowly forcing staff to take the, starting with the Swiss Guard. The Vatican won't allow, this is, this is the story here, okay, right here. Um, the Vatican won't allow any religious exemptions from taking the, despite the fact that many of the vaccines were developed using or tested on aborted fetus cells. Ain't that something? Remember, they're supposed to be against all this stuff. Staff at the Vatican City must provide a health certificate called the Green Pass in Italy. It shows recent negative uh, never mind, test, or there are no religious exemptions. But the Vatican is slowly forcing staff to take, starting with the Swiss Guard. Quote, those who oppose on religious grounds have often cited the use of cells from fetuses aborted decades ago in the development of immunizations, including in those aimed at combating uh, Rona, uh, reported RT. The Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith, the oldest among the nine congregations of the Roman uh, Curia, declared last year that so long as no other option is available, it is morally acceptable to receive. The Vatican was offering other options, however. So they did offer some other options. Um, for one, the Vatican was allowing staff to submit to regular testing instead of taking a, one of those. So you get regular testing because that's really, that's really exciting. But, you know, and it makes it sound good. But I'm sure they're going to have to pay for the testing they're probably going to have to do it two or three times a week, and they're going to end up making it just about to the point where they, you're going to have to quit, or they're going to make it so freaking miserable for you. Um, presumably, let's see here, this is what the Vatican staff uh, who wanted a religious exemption from the vaccine were doing. Additionally, the Vatican, Vatican City 
would allow staff who've already been sick from COVID and hence developed a natural immunity to it to enter the grounds. So they did cave on that. So if you have natural immunity, you have the antibodies that are letting you enter the grounds, but did not say building. You see what I'm saying? It didn't say building. Granted, these options were simply mainstream solutions, but they do offer a counter argument to the claim that no other option is available to those unwilling to take a shot. That's what they're telling people. No other option. You take it or you get gone. No religious exemption. You can't, you can't, I mean, because after all, we are the Vatican. We know better than you do. Ain't that, ain't that, that how they do? I know better for your health than you do. And, um, Let's see here. As previously reported, the Swiss Guard have resigned. Uh, three Swiss Guards have resigned rather than take the mandatory thing there. It is, there's, it, how, I mean, just how stupid is it? That you're telling me I have to take the, to protect the people that are protected because they took the shot that protects them, and that shot was going to protect them from me being the unprotected, but now I need to be protected to help protect them so that they don't get sick. Well, I thought that's why you get it. You should be fine, right? It's like uh, I'm going to go swimming and I got to put a life jacket on to keep you from drowning and you don't know how to swim and you don't have a life jacket on. That's just stupid. How's that going to help? But that's what they say. And then you get a life jacket and now I need a second life jacket. So that way it keeps you safe. And people go, yeah. But no. Reference. Reference discount. That's you. If you think that, that's you right there. So, what I, what do we say? You better start paying attention. You better start paying attention. I mean, it's it's uh, it's frightening. It's frightening what's happening, but at the same time, it's exciting. It's uh, it's it's a we live in fascinating times. You know, I mean, we just it it's fascinating times. Remember what Jesus said. He said. Having eyes to see you do not see, and having ears to hear, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Do you not remember? Remember that remember the lessons of the past or you're going to repeat them. I, I mean whether it's feeding five thousand people or it's just if it's just not being run over by a government. You know, you you have to catch this. You have to catch this stuff. If you don't catch it, you're gonna be in trouble. You're gonna keep it's gonna keep happening to you. That's the thing. Because you're not the rich and shameless, it will happen to you. It's not going to happen for you. It's going to happen to you. All right, here's the last one I want to talk about. This is what's funny right here, okay? Gavin Newsom, the uh, governor of the guy that just stole another election in, uh, uh, where's he at? California. Newsom faces criticism after admitting his 12-year-old daughter not jabbed amid on push for mandates for kids. Hey, that's something. Just like the guy at the beginning has taken the, uh, yeah, he's got five kids, but he says you should not be able to have kids. You should sell your child credit to the wealthy because you're destroying the earth. You can't drive your car. Meanwhile, he can fly all over the world in his private jet, and that's okay. Uh, so here's Gavin Newsom, and the, the little quote on here says, this is, this is RT News. This is considered reputable. Uh, how is this not the biggest story in America right now? How is it not, you know? California Governor Gavin Newsom has come under fire for delaying his own teenage daughter's COVID-19 vaccination while fuming at the lagging vaccination rate in those aged 12 to 17 and pushing for the uh, broad mandate. Conservatives have been up in arms over the recent report that Newsom's 12-year-old daughter has yet to get her first despite her father publicly encouraging parents to vaccinate their children even though the FDA has yet to fully green light the... Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Newsom told Los Angeles Times on Tuesday that his daughter has not had it yet. So that, this is what we're dealing with. This is what, we, this is what we're dealing with. It's, uh, it's, it's good enough for thee, not for me. And that, you know, it's like, wake up, man. Wake up, people. Can you not see that you're being abused? You know? Can you not see that you're being abused? You're, you're being spiritually, mentally abused. And it's, just, it's sad for me to see because it's like so many people that I, I really had a lot of respect for over the course of the last couple of years, you know. It's like, wow, guys. I mean, I really thought a lot of people and just all of a sudden, you know, they just kind of 
fell off the wayside. They fell to the wayside. and um, It's just sad. And so what are we left with? We're left at a church that puts its hope in politicians. We're left with a church that... that um, they put their, their hope, they put their, they're kind of putting everything in the hands of men. And it's just, it's sad to me, it's depressing to me that the, the church is doing that. I heard a preacher pray, uh, get ready to preach the other day. I was telling our congregation this this morning that um, he says, you know, Lord, and that's, and that's what, and that's what they do. They go, God, Lord. As I prepare to bring your word, God. Oh, Lord. Less of me, God. Push me out of your way, Lord, that you might speak to your people. And God, that your word will go forth and not hit deaf ears, but it will fall on good ground, Father. Oh, Lord. Less of me, Lord, and more of thee. Oh, Jesus. And the people out there, they go, oh, yes, praise the Lord, yes. <laughs> and it's just like, yo. And then what's he do? He, he goes into this long diatribe preaching about how President Trump's going to save the world and, and um, you know, Republicans. And, and I'm listening and I'm going, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? Oh, that's where it was. Jesus sent this man for us. So Jesus sent you somebody to take attention away from him. Um, so that don't, that don't really compute with me. Uh, maybe, maybe there's something wrong. I mean, maybe I don't... Maybe I just don't get it, you know. I mean, maybe um, I don't know, you know. Maybe maybe there's something wrong with my brain. I don't know. I'm just saying, y'all better start paying attention. If you think Jesus sent you somebody, you're an idiot. Okay, I'm just going. I'm just going. I'm just going to come out and say it. You're a total idiot if you think Jesus sent somebody to restore the earth and bring it back to proper Bible order. No, see, he sent you the Holy Spirit, okay? That's the thing. He sent you the Holy Spirit, so then that way when they try you, when they flog you and they, they humiliate you in the synagogues, remember when Jesus talked about this stuff? And what, what was it for? So that the Holy, you, the Holy Spirit would come to bring the remembrance of, and give you strength and minister to you. He didn't say, I mean, I, look here, I love President Trump. I thought he was awesome. I love the, I love everything about him. I love the crassness of him. I love his, his attitude. I, I mean, I just, that's, that's my kind of president. But he's not the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. Okay? It doesn't matter. You know, you know God, doesn't, God doesn't, will send a celebrity to you so that that way that celebrity can take attention away from his name. You know what I mean? God's not going to do it. God is not, I'm just telling you, he's not going to do it. Why, why, God doesn't need your help getting his word out. Jesus doesn't need your help getting his word out. I mean, right here, it's in uh, Philippians 2, in chapter 2, he says, uh, Have the mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was um, in the form of God, did not count it equality with God a thing to be grasped. He didn't, he didn't count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Isn't that amazing? But emptied himself by taking, and y'all should all know this, this is Philippians 2, 5. But emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even a death on the cross. Whew. Therefore God was highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Ain't that something? The name that is every, above every name. So that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay? He didn't say he'll send you Donald Trump. He didn't say he's going to send you Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden or any of them. He said he's going to send Jesus. That's the name above every name. 
That is the, that's the only name that you need, okay? That's your credentials. If you need anything else, the only thing you need is Jesus. Don't you tell me that Donald Trump's going to come restore stuff. It's like, you know, he can, but it's temporal. It's temporal. It's not going to last. It's just like, I, I mean, I think we're taking medicine right now. I think God's dishing out medicine for us. I do. And I think it's great. I don't like it. I don't. But I think that it's, it's awakening a sleeping giant. There's things that we do in this world that are of us, okay? There's things that happen in this world that are man's things. There's things that happen in this world that are de the devil's things. There's things, and everything happens because God ordains it. God allows it to happen. He encourages it. It's, it's um, I shouldn't say he encourages it because there are bad things that do happen that uh, because of our free will. But it's, it's it, nothing catches him by surprise, y'all. This is here for our learning, for our edification, to build us up. All the stuff that's going on, it is there so that we can show God, God, look how I stood by you. Look how I stood by you in that time. When things were going bad, I didn't I didn't act like him. I stood up for you. I stood so faithfully. That's what it's all about. That's what we're here for. We're not here to 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 cow tow and, 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 and give God give something else glory than God. Okay? That's not why you're here. You're here for one simple thing. To, to help work the manifest of God's destiny on this earth because not because he needs you to, but because he wants you to. He doesn't need your name. He doesn't need the name of anybody else. What he wants is your, he wants your name. He wants you to come and help him. He wants to use you to minister to his people. And that's it. That's all he wants. Let's see here. Um, Oh, man, I can't remember what that other one was that I read today. All right, anyway, God is good. God doesn't need your name, okay? He wants your name. He, he gave you your name. And so there's nothing that you're going to bring that he can't already have or bring. So it's um, keep yourself in perspective. Keep man in perspective, okay? I, I, I love some of these these people, these men and women of God. I love some of these men and women of uh uh, 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 the world, the politics, and things like that. I enjoy seeing them, but they're not Jesus. Okay, they're not Jesus. Doctor Fauci, right there. He says, "Trust the science." He says, "If we get everybody vaccinated, then." We'll be okay. And now he says, now he moves the goalpost a little further. He says, well, maybe by winter we'll still be wearing a mask. And I'm going, so why have I got to get the shot if I still got to do everything I'm doing now? And I haven't been sick. It's kind of stupid, ain't it? But yeah, it's, it's use your brain. Use that noggin you got. Use that noggin. Uh, Y'all got to start waking up. You got to start waking up. When you wake up, better stand up don't 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 roll over and take it don't lay on the floor wait and say hit me again hit me again you know I, I can take more no stand up you have people that love you you have people that you love that you need to fight for anyway that that's who you need to fight for you need to think about what we say at we still believe ministries you need to think about somebody other than yourself when you put yourself last, when you truly do like that preacher prays, and he says, Oh, Lord, that I might be less and you might be more, God. Oh, that's how you really need to be. You know what I mean? I think about like John the Baptist. John the Baptist put himself last. I mean, he's out there doing his job, and when Jesus comes, what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He didn't go. You know, he didn't do that. He didn't, he, there was nothing up and he it was just, okay, good. He's here. I can start I can start decreasing now. I've paid the way. I did my job. You see what I mean? And that was it. He knew he was done. That's how we need to be. That's how we need to be. So seek to, uh, you know, it's um, when I push back for the thing where I work, my employer is mandating this, the thing. And I'm, I'm pushing for the exemption. I'm, I'm pushing against the system. Not because I, I'm trying to be a turd or anything about it. I love the people I work for. I love the people I work with. They're all great. I, I think what they're doing is wrong. 
They think it's right. So I have to understand that. I have to, I have to realize that, okay? I think they're just as wrong as they think I am. So, I mean, you know, you, you have to consider that. You have to consider that and don't be mad with them that they're just they're making a decision based off of what they think is okay or what they're told. And so, but you have to push back because I think about my kids that might want to work there. I think about they get older, their kids that might want to work there. Right now, currently, there's like a, a 20 to 30 year project happening. That's, that's you know, that'll carry people a long ways. And so, that's what that's what you push for, Right. You should. Your job's one thing. But think about all the thousands. That, because of you standing up and sacrificing, because of you doing what needs to be done, letting God use you, think of all the hundreds or thousands of people that will come behind you that will benefit because of your sacrifice. I mean, do, do we have a biblical example of that? Somebody say, Jesus? I look at you say, Jesus? And that's um, because of him, because of one man. Look at what we have to live in. Look at what we have to endure because of one man, Adam's sin. But because of one man, we have, we have the opportunity to go to heaven. It's incredible because of one man's sacrifice. Look at, look at the, the, the riches, the untold riches that we have. You know what I mean? So it's exciting. It's, it's, it's a chance for you to stand up and be counted worthy. That's how you have to look at it. It's a chance to stand up and be kind of worthy. God will provide. If you stand up for the cause of Christ, you stand up for what God's wanting you to do, He will reward you. He has to. He said He would. And He's not a man that He should lie. So, you know, it's just like it's, it's that time. So anyway, don't be like this guy. Be able to make your own decisions. That that would be what I would say is the biggest thing. Be able to make, you know, make your own decisions. Get back to some semblance of freedom, okay, as, as we wind this thing down. I really didn't think it would, you know, I thought I'd have a lot of free time on this one. But this has been What's Wrong with the World Hour. I've been your host, Jason Hicks. Join us, uh, let's see here, when do we do service? We have, first day of the week, we have Sunday school. We broadcast that, we broadcast it on Facebook. We, how about that? Um, we have a regular service. Usually it's about 11.30, 11.45. Don't know how long we go with worship. Uh, worship just gets better and better every week. I love worshiping, y'all. Love it, love it, love it. It was loud today. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, like, it was It was just, oh, you know, it's like you can just feel the Spirit of God moving. And so it's really exciting. Um, but we'll start usually about 1130, 1145 probably with our service. And uh, so if you look for us, that's why. We don't broadcast worship. I don't really know why yet, but we will. Um and then uh, Sunday night, we do a Throne with the World Hour. And on the third Sunday of the month, we go minister over in Augusta. We continue the Davis ministry with deliverance. And uh, so that's awesome. So you don't always look for us on the third Sunday. But, um, and then Monday night, we, uh, a group of us uh, does a program we used to do on a radio station. And it's kind of separate, but not really, from We Still Believe Ministries. It's, it's, it's all We Still Believe Ministry people, so it's, we might as well call it part of the ministry. But... Um, it's Ask For Me In My House. You can catch it on Facebook. Ask For Me In My House. Just like out of the book of Joshua. And we talk about things to do with the family. Um, we're going to have some uh, guests tomorrow. Miss Jean Mason will join us. So it's going to be, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to talk about deliverance and how to know if you're, you know, in somewhere legit or if you're in a cult. Well, you have to ask these questions. Just because they say Jesus don't mean they believe Jesus. Um, and then Tuesday night we have prayer meeting and uh, worship. And so, hey, if you're out there and you want to come, come. Come be part of it, okay? Hit us up on, and the, the, you know, send us a thing on Facebook or YouTube, whatever. We'll, we monitor that. We'll check it out and we'll let you know where we are. Uh, we're at the Hicks home. Look it up on, hey, Google it. We still believe ministries. It'll give you the address. It's in there. Um, and then you can also catch us on Wednesday night. We're doing our Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. And that is, uh, that's, a, that, that's a fun study. I'm enjoying that. And then we have nothing on Thursdays and Fridays or Saturdays. We take three days off in a row. We prepare for Sunday and get prayed up. And then we do it again because God is good. God is faithful. Um, but anyway, God bless y'all. We love you. Thank you for joining us with What's Wrong with the World Hour. And uh, we will see you next week.